Hello and good day once again. Uh, for this top topic, we will be uh, talking about media and personality development. The internet and other forms of media are now deeply integrated in the daily lives of people and adolescents. And they are deeply connected with these new media as they were born in a time when technology is at its peak and available for all to use, especially with the Generation Z. In the developed countries, it was found that adolescents um, actually spent most of their time using the new media as compared to any other activity which is second only to sleeping. The new media is an important part of the daily lives of adolescents and also young adults like you. And they constantly connect their offline lives with uh, the online presence and make use of the multiple resources that they have or that you have, like your smartphones, your laptops, your iPad, and etc. And that is to stay in touch with your social networks, especially uh, with Facebook and also with Twitter. Um, constant communication is the main motivation behind obsession with the new media, according to, according to Sobra Maniam and Greenfield. Uh, the the use of the new media is not limited to the internet as adolescents can actually be seen using multiple media simultaneously rather than taking turns. Just like um, tuning in to music, listening to music while they are uh, checking uh, their statuses or their friends' posts uh, on Facebook or Instagram or the different social media platforms. And um, adolescent social and personality development, um, it is an important development factor uh, during adolescence um, and in that uh, children become more self-conscious and become more increasingly concerned about who they are. Um, if you try to ponder uh, back when you were still in high school, you were so concerned about how uh, people from the society would be able to perceive you as an individual. You get to be associating yourself with uh, individuals who are good in their academics because you want to be perceived as one. Um, you want to be musically inclined because um, you want to be identified as one. Um, you want to join the individuals who are... Uh, also considered to be um, individuals who are highly influential because you want to also be perceived as as um, a such. Now, um, what will happen if an individual would not be able to establish his or her own identity? And that is when uh, Eric Erickson's theory of uh, the different uh, stages of development um, there is likely to be um, a so-called identity confusion or role confusion. Uh, basically, when a person would fail to be able to successfully create ident an identity for himself or herself. Self-esteem is an important concern in people of this age. And most likely, self-esteem is also a factor easily affected by um, young adults or adolescents' physical appearance or, or how they also view themselves. And um, because they don't see themselves fit for the society or may find that incongruence, meaning there is a great disparity between their real self and their ideal selves. Now, according to Eric Erickson, um, 
in his stages of development, in his theory, um, he stated that teens may face much psychological discomfort as they go through uh, a so-called identity crisis. Now, uh, let's try to understand that identity crisis is not only uh, limited to uh, the uh, gender um, identity of the individual. Uh, it is also about the social role of the person or um, how the person would be able to conceptualize um, the kind of person he or she is in the future. And, and uh, that is actually part of uh, the identity crisis that most or all of the individuals would also be experiencing. He proposed that during this stage, teens battle between identity and identity confusion as they struggle to identify personality characteristics that are unique to them. Failing to develop a suitable identity can cause much distress and also have a negative impact on their social functioning in the later years of their lives. Um, what are the main characteristics of adolescent years? Um, first is that when it comes to creating uh, an identity, uh, there is the so-called identity achievement according to Eric Erickson. Um, the individuals are successfully uh, able to develop their identity and show personality features like uh, being highly motivated um, with high levels of self-esteem and also um, a sense of achievement. So in other words, this is the main characteristic of the adolescent year or adolescent years where they are successful in establishing their own identity. Now, another characteristic of adolescent years include moratorium. Um, when individuals are actually in the process of seeking their true identity and they spend most of their time contemplating what they should commit to in life. Like when people would keep on asking, what do I want with my life? Um, who do I want to become in the future? What degree will I be taking? Um, we, we actually have uh, reached that point in our lives or this point in our lives where we get to be having a lot of questions about ourselves. And this is actually just part of the process in trying to um, establish our own identity. This is moratorium. When you found yourself contemplating, always questioning, always trying to reflect on what you want to become in the future or what do you want to do with your life. Now moving forward, there is also that sense or that characteristic uh, we call foreclosure according to Eric Erickson. Uh, he said that uh, this is when individuals who are usually conformists and authoritarian, um, they are always being uh, conscious about what other people are doing, what most people are into. And uh, they seek aspiration, change, and have little anxiety compared to moratorium. Um, in, in this particular characteristic, most individuals would be conforming um, to the group, meaning they don't have individual um, decisions for themselves, but they are able to decide only because they are pressured by their friends. Like, for example, we need to take um, journalism or communication because uh, most of our friends are taking the, the degree, are enrolled to the degree. And, and that's a perfect decision for us to 
um, make because our friends are enrolling for the uh, course, basically. Uh, diffusion happens or it's a characteristic of adolescent years when uh, individuals who have low self-esteem uh, and also autonomy and they are finding themselves to be weak and diffused and this is the time where we're in um, they are also easily pushed into doing things as they don't feel strongly about anything so they are feeling that they are being pushed to the wall and they are not able to uh, decide on, on what they really want in life or what do they really want to do with their lives. And that's why uh, you get to perceive individuals to um, start enrolling into this particular uh, degree and then eventually they would stop, they enroll to another uh, degree once again and eventually they would uh, drop out and decide to do um, another thing. So they are just uh, able to start and not uh, able to finish what they have started. Now, what would help us uh, able to um, gain um, information, more information about ourselves? Uh, the Joe Harry window uh, is another exercise or another um, experiential uh, activity we can be able to also do. Um, this is uh, actually created by um, Harry Loft and John Ingham. And that's why the, the name is actually Joe Harry, uh, which is uh, the Joe Harry window. Now, um, the open self is about us being able to know something about um, ourselves and it is also known to others meaning this is our public self um, it is any information about us that both um, you as a person and others know uh, the blind self is another part of the window which is uh, unknown to self and also uh, known to others just like the blind spot uh, other people are able to know about you but you yourself don't know about that potentiality or about that bad behavior um, the hidden self is basically unknown um, to others and uh, known to self meaning this is your private self uh, any information about you uh, that you know but others don't know and this is basically your private um, self or the, the things that other people don't know about you the unknown self is both unknown to others and also unknown to self basically um, these could uh, mean and refer to our potentialities we don't know uh, what the future uh, is all about for us or what future lies ahead of us. And uh, these are the different potentialities that would likely uh, be, be happening to all of us. Now, um, according to uh, John Ingham and Harry Loft, um, the, the open self must actually be bigger than the other three windows if we want to know more about ourselves, if we want to develop ourselves. You might say that it should be the private uh, self or the private window that should be cultivated. But uh, according to them, uh, in order for you to gain better information about yourself, uh, the things that are unknown to yourself, it should be that um, you are open to listen to other people's feedbacks and at the same time, you're also open to disclose information about yourself. And that is a healthier uh, way to know more about yourself. Um, when can we say that a person is psychologically healthy or psychologically mature? 
Now, there is what we call as the psychological growth and the, and the psychological death paths. These are the paths uh, towards psychological maturity. Um, this is basically what we are orienting and uh, sharing to most of our clients uh, in, in therapy or in counseling. Now, um, basically everything starts with awareness. You need to be more aware about yourself and to get to know more about yourself is um, the first step basically is awareness. With awareness, um, you will be able to understand yourself. There is self-understanding. And later, it would blossom to acceptance. No? You know for yourself uh, what you want, your limitations, um, your skills, your strengths, and your weaknesses. By being able to uh, embrace your weaknesses and flaws. And from that, you would be able to also be responsible for yourself. You are bound to say that that is beyond your limits. And uh, you would be able to designate tasks. You would be able to uh, say, uh, take uh, proper responsibility over yourself. Because you know your limits. You know your capabilities as an individual. And that leads to psychological growth or maturity, you are uh, being able to reflect, you are able to also um, have this better insight over yourself because you know yourself better than anybody else. Um, what leads us to dysfunctions or mental health problems? That starts with unawareness by simply not paying attention to what you're currently experiencing. Just like, for example, not being able to uh, be true um, when other people would be asking you, are you okay? Uh, you tend to say that you are okay, that you are fine, even if you are not. And unawareness would um, cultivate denial uh, to a certain extent that when people would be asking you how you are, or if you would be um, faced with or confronted with um, the truth or facts. Like, for example, people would be telling you, you are not happy because I'm seeing that uh, you keep on um, isolating yourself. You don't smile. You don't interact. And, and you would simply say, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm happy and you keep on denying that experience you get to reject uh, your condition you keep on uh, rejecting the idea that something is wrong and it leads to alienation it, it uh, reaches to a point where you get to um, question how are you feeling how are you truly feeling or is it time for you to get angry is it uh, appropriate for you to feel uh, slighted uh, are you insulted no you get to question when is the right time for me to feel emotions and that leads to dysfunctions or psychological death um this is already done no now um let's go to transaction analysis Eric Byrne, or um, in, in, in his transactional analysis, he was actually able to uh, provide us with a very interesting um, life positions whenever we get to communicate ourselves with others. Now, uh, he, he made mention, Eric Byrne, that whenever we get to interact with other people, we are like transacting a business with them. Now, this is how we get to present ourselves. Now, um, in the different life positions, we could say that these are uh, the life positions that are very dominant in their lives. 
um, these are the life dimension, uh, life possessions that they get to share with other people. Um, these are the life possessions that come out of their mouth whenever they would be doing transactions or be communicate, communicating with others. Now, the I am not okay, you are okay position or life position. Um, this is the one down position. Like, uh, you are doubting your capabilities as a person, as an individual. And you are perceiving that other people are better and uh, they are better than you. Um, and that's why they perceive that you are okay and I am not okay. There could be a bit of, uh, let's say, inferiority complex uh, whenever they get to be in this position. Other people are better off than myself and I am of no good or I doubt myself, my capabilities, and um, I don't think I could be able to perform that, give that task to other people. And, and that these are the usual life scripts um, when you are to notice uh, and, and check on this life, demand, life uh, position, basically. Um, the I am not okay, you are not okay, this is the hopeless position uh, this is just like, for example, this is terrible, we'll never make it. Or this could be the life position of individuals who are um, suicidal. Like, um, this is not a good world to live in. Uh, and, and that's why uh, I, I have decided to um, do this. Okay. Or, or individuals who may be perceiving that the world is unfair and also uh, they themselves no, are not also seeing uh, any good about themselves. And that is a very, very sad uh, position, life position, because they are not seeing anything good about themselves and they are not also uh, seeing any from uh, their environment. Uh, on another note another life position this is the i am okay and you are not okay meaning this could be with individuals who are having personality problems you know uh, people who are difficult to deal with just like uh, the bosses you know in most uh, companies they are not leaders they are bosses and they are always perceiving themselves to be okay and other people are not uh, this is the one opposition. You are no, uh, you are not doing that right. And let me show you. Meaning they are the ones capable of doing things. They are overconfident, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's also a sad uh, kind of life position. And uh, this is the healthy position. Uh, the I am okay. You are okay. Um, they get to see other individuals to be. Um, highly motivated, they are successful, they are performing very well, and at the same time, they are not envious about other people's successes because they are seeing themselves to be okay. So it's um, it's like being equated as I am happy that other, other people are being successful because I myself too, um, we are also going there in, into that track, even if it's not yet time for you to be successful you are just perceiving that um, it is okay to be uh, okay with people uh, what are the roadblocks from achieving psychological maturity um, these are the different def defense mechanisms that we have so we have denial projection and doing repression regression introjection displacement reaction formation and lastly we have rationalization. These are just um, the most common defense mechanisms that people use. Although there are also other forms of defense mechanisms. But these are just the most common um, defense mechanisms and we are working with them. And we are trying to understand them. What are they? Uh, first, uh, denial. Uh, it involves ignoring the reality of a situation to avoid anxiety like you are confronted 
with uh, the facts or uh, information. Like, you are not happy because you are not smiling. You are um, maybe not likely to be in your good weather or uh, you are under the weather. You are not in your good and best self. When you are confronted by your co-employees or your um, classmates, you get to deny it. Um, it could be with. Uh, it could also be the same with individuals who have um, uh, an individual who has been using uh, or abusing um, substances, or people who have substance use disorders in the family, and whenever the neighbors would be confronting them and asking them if their son or daughter is using, the, uh, even if uh, they know uh, about it, they get to have that information from others or they know uh, basically personally about it. They get to deny still uh, the information being confronted to them. Uh, it often means that one is struggling to accept something that seems to be overwhelming or stressful. And simply denying, no, it's not true. Now, that is a defense mechanism. Um, another defense mechanism is also projection. Uh, it involves taking your own unacceptable qualities or feelings and ascribing them to other people. Just like, for example, a husband who is unfaithful would likely be projecting his own behavior to the wife by saying that the wife is likely to um, to be unfaithful in their marriage and um, even if we know that thinkers are doers uh, this guy in order for him to be out of uh, the the blaming position uh, he would be the one projecting the blame to the wife and that is what we call as projection uh, just try to imagine a uh, um, an LCD projector trying to project an image. Okay, that LCD, although uh, that is the main source or the mechanism where you get to see the images, uh, they are just projecting it to uh, a screen, not to another entity. And that is projection. You yourself is the one uh, doing the bad behavior or you simply want... Um, or there is a desire or a feeling you know, that you are currently experiencing, but you are pushing it and ascribing it to another individual. Okay. Now, uh, moving forward, uh, another form of the defense mechanism is what we call as undoing. Undoing happens when uh, people try to make up for uh, what they feel are inappropriate, like thoughts, feelings, or behaviors. Like, for example, uh, a husband and a wife fought, maybe they had an argument, and uh, it could either be that the husband started it, and the next day, the husband uh, felt maybe guilty about how uh, he instigated a fight between them, and that's, why, and that's why he decided to buy her flowers after, and that is undoing, um, not actually talking directly and communicating about what happened but uh, the action itself uh, tried to to speak for uh, that desire for the individual to reconcile and in, in most abusive relationships and doing happens like uh, the husband would be initiating the domestic violence by uh, trying to also inflict pain and physical abuses against the wife and right after the next day, uh, the, the husband would be acting weirdly as if nothing happened uh, yesterday. And uh, they would uh, initiate to reconcile by uh, purchase, purchasing flowers, purchasing gifts for their wives. Uh, and, and that is the process of undoing. Just remember the undo button in uh, our Microsoft Word. And simply, they're just trying to reset and uh, trying to... To rectify uh, behavior because they are feeling guilty about it and they 
don't want to feel guilty uh, some more. Another defense mechanism is repression. Um, they are acts to keep information out of the conscious awareness. It's like um, that past information is being relegated back into the unconscious in an unconscious manner. Uh, just like, for example, for rape victims, uh, an, an initial reaction would be suppression, um, which is also the opposite of repression. Uh, they get to consciously be motivating themselves to forget about what happened until such time that they get to be um, forgetting about what happened to them and it becomes uh, an unconscious way. And in that unconscious process, uh, it already becomes a repressive or a repression defense mechanism. Because any information about what happened to them is no longer available in their conscious awareness. And that is repression. The unconscious way of keeping the information out from the consciousness of the individual. Um, introjection. It occurs when a person internalizes the ideas or voices of other people. Like, for example, when we get to um, have, uh, let's say, we admire somebody like uh, uh, an artist and basically, because that individual uh, prefers to um, maybe have like a signature item, prefers these kinds of brands, you get to also internalize that in you and you follow whatever that person is doing. You get to uh, behave like him. And that is part of interjection. It's like conforming to what other people like. Um, this picture basically is a concrete example of introjection. You are like eating an apple, but you don't choose to chew. You just basically swallow it whole. You, you, you swallow it as a whole. Um, it is commonly associated with the internalization of external authority. Like you get to follow um, your parents. Let's say when they get to say that you need to uh, take law after your bachelor's degree, then basically that's uh, part of introjection. When you don't decide for yourself and you get to internalize other people's uh, decision for yourself. Displacement, um, it involves taking out our frustrations or feelings and imposes uh, on, on other people or objects that are less threatening. Um, let's say, for example, the wife and the husband fought and out of the displeasure of the wife, uh, the child is the available uh, entity that is not anxiety uh, that is not likely to cause anxiety when uh, the displeasure would be displaced. Uh, whenever that frustration would be channeled to the hu husband, uh, that is uh, something unimaginable because the husband is more powerful than the wife. Uh, let's say, uh, as an example then um, the wife would be turning against the child. And that is a form of displacement. And, and simply displacement is when you get to be angry about someone else and you get to perceive that that person is more powerful than you are and you channel it to another entity. It could be an object or it could be a person available in your household. And that's why when you get to be frustrated with your teacher, your younger sibling would suffer because they are the ones um, experiencing your own displacement 
your emotional displacement over them. Uh, another uh, defense mechanism is what we call as reaction formation. It is uh, a person's conscious uh, replacement of unwanted or anxiety-provoking impulse with its opposite. So just like, for example, um, you are caught into the situation wherein you didn't like your mother at that time. Like, uh, you don't like her because you, uh, you find her to nag so much. And then when you are confronted by your mom about um, the uh, if, if you are to be asked uh, if you love her or like uh, if you would be confronted with a certain information, you get to behave differently. And that is a reaction formation. You are likely to be uh, reacting differently with how you have felt. You get to say that you love your mom even if you may not be feeling it genuinely at that point in time for um, example purposes only. Um, rationalization. Now, rationalization happens when uh, we get to involve uh, explaining an unacceptable behavior or feeling in a rational or logical manner, avoiding the true reasons for behavior. Um, rationalization is the same with intellectualization, meaning you get to uh, find a justification for um, a misbehavior or a mistake that you have done. Like, for example, um, when a teacher would be or a professor would be asking you why you are late, you keep on justifying uh, about something, but then that may not be the truth and it's because it's an anxiety provoking situation you get to rationalize things of which is a form of a defense mechanism now let's go to the different positions in conflict uh, this is also another um, opportunity where uh, people get to be um, they, they are also being blocked from acting health uh, in a healthy manner. Uh, it's basically because some individuals would prefer to be using a specific position in conflict. Um, just like with um, the defense, the different defense mechanisms that we have learned, um, many psychologists and professionals have claimed that when people get to practice a certain defense mechanism just one specific defense mechanism all their life just like using denying or denial every single time they get to be in an anxiety provoking situation um, they say that that individual would be likely to be suffering from a certain mental health condition. Because if you keep on using one specific um, defense mechanism alone all your life, then there is something wrong with that individual. That's according to most um, professionals. Now let's try to uncover uh, these life or these um, con uh, or positions in conflict. Now, in, in this position, in the first position, uh, it is the I win, you lose position. This is like a boss to an employee or a teacher to students uh, position um, wherein one is saying that I am right, I am totally right, and the other person is wrong, completely wrong. And just like adolescents who are rebellious against their parents, they say that I am right, solely right, Other pe uh, and the, the other person or the parent or the parents are wrong, completely wrong. Um... Here, the second position is the I leave, I lose position. 
So the viewpoint here is that conflicts are hopeless. Or even if you get to justify yourself, other people would still not listen to you. So that's why people leave or uh, it may not be um, that to, to it may not reach to a, a certain extent, extent that a person would leave. Other people might actually be escaping you know, from that situation through listening to music. Because when they communicate how they feel, things wouldn't actually be uh, changing. And that's why they say it's the I leave, I lose position. Now moving forward, another position is the I yield to win acceptance position. What do we mean by this? Uh, it means that you value more, um, you value friendship more than trying to also um, establish what is the truth about. So if you are a worker or if you are a student, if you want to express a point, so instead of you expressing that point, um, you value friendship more than being truthful and that's why you yield you say okay i don't want to eat jollibee anymore uh i i have decided to join you uh, at mcdonald's and even if you wanted to eat in jollibee you decided to go with your friends because you value friendship uh, more than your choice so it's far better to be nice, to submit, to go along with others' demands and stay as friends. Um, the last position or the fourth position is the I can and care. I can care and confront position. It's, uh, as you can observe, this is the, the healthiest um, position in the different positions of conflict. It's working through differences by giving clear messages of I care and I want, which a care and confront is most helpful. Like um, being able to express what you want and uh, trying to also say that um, you are expressing yourself because you care for the person or you care for those uh, whom you are interacting with. Um, they say that confronting is a bad word because people don't like to be confronted and um, it may be putting them into a different position or a, in a bad situation. Uh, a good word is actually caring and that's why uh, they say that you could be carefronting. Uh, by carefronting, meaning to say you start with the words um I care for you and that's why I want you to behave in this manner. And that's what carefronting is. Instead of you trying to um, really prod about the person's uh, misbehavior or mistake. So there should be a push where you get to uh, first uh, express your care for the person. And at the same time, you are also... Uh, confronting him or her at the same time. Now, another way for us to um, do it is actually practicing DESI. So, when you find yourself in a in a in a situation where conflict would likely happen or uh, conflict is already um, evident, you just get to describe th about the event. Now, you need to be objective about it. Uh, let's say, for example, um, a conflict between siblings, like um, you yourself. You don't want uh, your younger siblings to just use your own um, clothes. So you just get to describe what happened. You just say, um, you know what? Last Friday, my favorite sh uh, shirt, uh, I, I can't find my uh, favorite shirt. And you get to express. Express uh, by saying how you feel. So you just have to say, um, 
let's go back to describe. Um, last Friday, uh, my favorite shirt was lost. I I can't find it. And then I saw you wearing my favorite shirt. And you just have to express by saying, I am sad about it. And express is different from explain. If you observe that people would say, I am angry at you. I am sad uh, uh, about what happened because yada, yada, yada. They have, uh, they have already explained how they are feeling instead of expressing. By simply expressing, you just simply say how you feel. And it doesn't need any explanation at all. Because if you have to observe on it, people who get to explain how they feel wouldn't actually be feeling what they are currently experiencing to be genuine. When you get to explain that you are angry, uh, the feeling gets to be diffused and you are no longer feeling uh, angry anymore. You lose the, the genuineness of how you feel when you get to explain yourself. Uh, by, by staying to, to uh, be in that expressive um, state, you just simply state how you feel. So you express, I am sad about it. And you suggest, no? Um, by saying, um, next time, uh, can I expect for you to um, ask permission before you um, also, before you get to um, use my shirt? And um, involve yourself. And involving is when you say uh, that care fronting phrase, no? Um, I care for you. That's why I want you to behave in this manner. I want you to behave properly. And by involvement also, it entails that you are not bound to do the same. No, by uh, getting your siblings clothing without asking for permission. Because conflict would always be present in, in these kinds of situations when you get to uh, do the same do the act itself or the same act now um why is there a need for us to um uh, have that care fronting position or the i can care uh and um also i can care and uh confront position why is there a need for us to do that? Now, um, here, if um, you follow the I win, I win, you lose position, the first position, it's my way, our score would be 1 over 9. What do we mean by 1 over 9? Meaning to say, if you want to do it your way, because you are correct and always correct and other people are wrong, completely wrong, you have little concern for relationships and that's why you are the boss. You are always being respected. You are not after other people's feelings and you are you have high concerns for goals. You have high concern for goals and that's one over nine. Um, if you leave and uh, you choose to have the I leave and I lose position, there's no way and, and your score is actually 1 over 1, meaning you have little concern for relationship and you have little concern for goals. So that's 1 over 1. Uh, if it's your way, uh, meaning you value friendship more than your goals, then your score is 9 over 1, meaning you have little concern for goals and you, ha you value friendship or the relationship. Now, with the I can care and confront, um, you have a score of 9 over 9 because you are concerned about your goals and you also value relationship. Now, what do this tell us? Um, at some point in our lives, we need to basically be able to learn how to speak, to express ourselves how we feel, and that we target 
our goals, we also target relationships. Even if you say that, no, sir, um, I can't be able to speak to my boss. Even if the, that individual is hard to deal with, uh, at some point in your life, you need to also speak up. You need to tell the person um, how you feel. Like uh, telling the, the individual that you are uncomfortable at times because you find him or her to be uh, bossy and be dictating what you are bound to do. Or even if you see that uh, there's no hope in this organization and it's better for me to leave, at some point in time, um, you might be able to also observe that uh, it is better for us to express ourselves rather than to keep things uh, for ourselves. I hope that totally makes sense.